Hi there, welcome to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. I'm Scott. As promised and as requested, we're gonna start doing some reviews and talk about some stuff that's related to, uh, oh, I guess you might wanna call it uh, home security, uh, maybe a little more geared towards the prepping side of things. And uh, in, that, in that note, I've got an unboxing and a review to do for you today. That I think you're really gonna like. This stuff is really cool. Um, been using it for a very long time, so I already know quite a bit about it. And let's see what we have here. We have a box from the Decoder Alert System, and this is a handheld Decoder Alert transceiver, basically a walkie-talkie. And uh, basically what this does, allows you to communicate in the MERS radio system. It's multiple multiple use a multi-use radio service yes well that looks familiar and that is your driveway alert transmitter I can see they've changed these a little bit not a lot as I mentioned we've been doing this now and in using these for uh, close to 20 years uh, very good luck with them as a matter of fact our one of our first units that we've had all this time is right here. And you can see that they have changed very little. They're almost, almost identical to, uh, to what they were way back around when MERS was first introduced around, I don't know, I guess it was around Y2K. These things have a very simple purpose. They, they detect motion via an infrared beam. So they're, they're a motion detector. And if something breaks that beam, they send a radio signal over the MERS radio system on the MERS frequency of your choice, and they let you know that a beam has been broken. What they also allow you to do, you can select the number of each unit up to four units. So you can have unit one, two, three, and four. That way, when you get your audio alert, uh, it will say alert zone one, or zone two, zone three, or zone four, that will let you know where your perimeter has been uh, breached, or where the beam has been broken. Uh, these are magnetic. They do sell ones that are magnetic that you can bury in your driveway that are made to detect vehicles. These will detect anything that breaks the beam. So where you mount them on the tree or on the building or wherever you mount them, the height is very important. Uh, if we mounted ours down too close to the ground, the ground, the dog and the chickens would be setting them off constantly. So you want to you want to pick your height. You have to be kind of careful about setting them up. But uh, as I said, 20 years of service or close to it, it's probably closer to 18. If I had to really uh, split hairs, and this one here has just gotten to the point where it needs to be sent back in and have a little service work done to it. So obviously I'm impressed enough by them so that not only are we using them, but when this one started giving us trouble, I immediately wanted to buy one to replace it because we rely on them. And uh, if you're in a rural environment and you like to know what's going on on your property, sometimes before it happens, you know, so you get a heads up, I think you guys are gonna find this really interesting. Now let's get to opening up this new one and putting it together. Oh, this one has a rubber antenna instead of having the old metal telescopic one. They come with a very simple little instruction booklet. And that lets you know how to set up your different channels. These are very simple to, uh, to set up and use. You get a hold of this. They still come apart like the old ones do. You have uh, basically the inside of these. You have your holder for your batteries. You have uh, little dials that you turn to select the channels. This one has these has these little uh, plugs. You have to have six AA batteries to run these. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the antenna on first. It's never good to have a transmitter broadcast without an antenna on it. It's actually very bad. I never do that. Okay. So get that installed. And now we'll see what's going to happen if we power it up. 
Now these batteries, I have found, uh, of course it's, it's better if you use good quality batteries, obviously, you get better battery life. I would say that these batteries last anywhere Oh, six months to eight months, maybe a year around here before they have to be replaced. This battery pack slides in here. This in the center is actually your, your eye. This over here is just an indicator light. Okay, so using my, my knife here as a little pointer, I'm going to show you some of the adjustments and how this works. Uh, they've added some features to this kind of, which is, this is really cool since I've had the old ones. Uh, when you're selecting your channels, this selects which uh, actual merge channel you're using. These two here select your privacy tone squelch. You use both of those. Everything is in the instructions. It lets you know, you know what you'll be using so you can make sure you duplicate what you already have or you get everything set up the same. And this little switch here is a four-way little slider that lets you select what number you want this transmitter to be. We're gonna use this one as number one, zone one. So it's all the way to the top because we have zone one selected. So then now, now everything back here is all taken care of. We're gonna put this back on very carefully. Okay, now these other things up here are actually filters. This little, uh, movable block here, this little jumper, is actually a filter for distance, how far you want the infrared beam to shoot. With this one, you can set it to either uh, 30 feet, 50 feet, or 80 feet. Uh, the place it's gonna be, I've picked the 80 feet, because it's gonna be monitoring a very large expanse. This next little jumper here turns the LED, this light bulb here, on and off. If you were to turn that on, whenever somebody broke the beam, that light would go off, which is really no big deal, except if, if you don't want people to know where your transmitter is, and that would kind of be a dead giveaway. Okay, this next little filter here is your sensitivity. You'd want it on for outdoor use because what that's gonna do is try to filter out uh, leaves blowing by, maybe fast flying birds, things like that. If you're gonna be in an indoor environment where a lot of stuff isn't moving, except people, you'd wanna turn that filter off because you don't need it. You're not gonna be having, you know, outside like raindrops dripping by it, things like that. And then this third one gives you the option to select a reset of either 15 seconds or like 120 seconds. What that means is it resets every 15 seconds or 120 seconds, depending on which way you choose. If it goes off once, well, something's coming, and then if, if it turns around and directly leaves within 15 seconds, breaks the beam again, you won't get the second tone. If you put it the other way and put it down here, that, that length of time changes to 120 seconds. I prefer to have it up here on the 15 seconds, that way it lets me know hey, maybe there's more than one vehicle. I have three or four vehicles coming up the driveway, what's going on? So that's the way that, that I prefer to have that set up. We've got all the proper settings selected for how we use these radios around here. I've got my filters in the position I want. I've got my channels selected. I've got my privacy tones selected. So with the filter installed, the only thing left you have, have left to do in here is to take your batteries and slide them right over here. There's a nice little spot for those to, to slide into. Okay, and then this closes, and this latch is rather tight. You have, you have a nice waterproof seal around here and one around your antenna. And that is the transmitter that is ready to go. In this box, you have just what it says it is. You have a HD handy, handy talkie or handheld transceiver. It's MERS, it's two-way, so if you have two of these, uh, if you want to use them for hunting, or sometimes I'll take one out on the tractor with me so Shell can hear me when I'm plowing snow or if I'm up in the woods, they're very easy to use. They're in a lot of, case, a lot of cases are easier to use than a CB. So uh, let's, uh, let's open it up. And so we have, we have instructions, we have a charger, 
And the reason they send you a charger is because they're also good enough to provide you with real rechargeable batteries. So there you have it. That is your decoder alert handheld unit. You need to install your antenna. Uh, you have push to talk over here and monitor. You have a jack for your charger, buttons to connect to your modes and how you choose to use it, and volume and a call tone. You can have them with a separate microphone, I believe is a mic jack. I can't remember what this is. So if you wanted to use it with a separate mic and have the mic hooked to your shirt, that, you, that is a possibility. You have the radio in the pocket or on the belt. Maybe you have a business where you might want to use them because these, these will work far better, you know, even more as part of a bigger system. We, we tend to use them just as a driveway alert. But uh, there's no reason in the world why you couldn't use these around your business. Uh, they, they really, for what, for what you pay, they work very good. Uh, these are basically, they're, they run on 12 volts. So that's why we got the, the six batteries. And uh, we'll get into it and put the batteries on. To get your batteries in these, I had to look because it's been a while since I've had to change batteries in the ones that we have. Reason being is they give you rechargeable batteries. They don't plan on you getting in here all the time. So you loosen this up or take this off. That's your belt carrier. Then you have a screw right here that retains your battery cover plate. So you want to take that out. And this slides off. And lo and behold, you have your battery compartment with a ribbon that makes removing your batteries easy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the batteries in. Should work. We'll fold this back down around to get it out of the way. Put the cover back in place. And this radio, I believe the batteries are all charged, so it should power right up. And there it is. Channel one, all ready to go. And as far as these mode buttons, this, uh, this lets you select your channels up and down. It lets you select your privacy codes. This is fairly simple. Okay, so now we have our radio programmed uh, with the same security tones and on the same frequency that the rest of our system is. The ones you choose are up to you. You, you have, uh, I think it's channel one through five, and then you have quite a large selection of subtones to go under that. And you all know if you need to use that stuff or not until you set them up. If you start hearing radio activity that you don't want to hear, that somebody else, you might want to select a different channel, maybe change the privacy tone, and you'll be able to filter most of that out. Now, right now, I've got this cardboard box in front of the eye for the transmitter. As soon as I move that box, you're going to hear the alert that you would normally hear as the auditory alarm in your house. And here we go. You would get that as soon as anything with any size to it has broken the beam. It will last for 15 seconds, it won't transmit again, but once the 15 seconds comes up, every time that beam is broken, it will transmit again. Alert zone one. Alert zone one. Alert zone one. I like these. I like these radios a lot. We've been using them a long time. Even our dog knows how to use these. I know that sounds funny, but when she hears one of those transmitters go off and she hears alert zone one, that dog is up and going. She knows that company is coming. These, these were designed, uh, the Dakota alert system, they were designed by the Quam family. And I believe it's South Dakota. And the reason that they came up with them is because, well, they're ranchers. And... They're in the plains and they wanted to know who and when was going through their gates, driving on their roads, you know, around their livestock, things like that. And uh, the, the fellow that runs the place now, he's a second generation. His name is Jason Quam, and he, very, very good people to deal with. I would urge you that if you're going to invest in some of these, I would buy them factory direct because their customer service is second to none. If you have any problems, they're fantastic about getting back to you and helping you. I can't say enough about them. They've, they provide a great product. 
Jason says, I've had better luck than most people do because I've been using ours almost 20 years before I started to have any issues with them, but they're a good rig. You tend to set them up and leave them alone unless they need batteries. So in my world, uh, the less that you mess with them, kind of, the, the better off you are. Set them up, make sure they work, and, and walk away, basically, is what you need to do. And use them and listen to them. Now, the transmitter alert, the actual decoder alert system itself, right now is going for $159.99. So $160 bucks each for these transmitters. These handhelds are $109, $109.99, so $110. And that's, uh, that's quite a bit of money, but I mean, the stuff lasts a long time, it's, it's good quality. And you can also, if you don't want a handheld, they also sell a little console, like a uh, base station. It looks a lot like an old answering machine, kind of. It's like a little, a little flat console, like a shortwave radio kind of a, a, a enclosure that it's in. And I didn't bother to buy one of those because I like the the availability of the handhelds, being able to carry them around and go wherever we go. Even if we were doing something and we were off somewhere else camping, I wouldn't take the, the decoder alert transmitters, but I might take these radios so we could use them to talk to each other. Semi-privately, you know, so it's, it, other than using a cell phone, this, this is really handy, it really is. Now you can buy them as a kit. They have several kit options available. Uh, for instance, the kit for both of these, uh, this was, like I said, $110, and this would have been $160. You can get the kit for $249.99, so $250. Bucks. So you, you've saved yourself some money in buying it in kit form. You're in business. I mean, once you've, it's, it's kind of tricky to set them up the first couple times. Uh, there are people out there that will help you. I'm sure Jason and his folks over at uh, Customer Support We'll uh, be glad to provide you with any more information. Uh, the stuff that's in the manual should tell you everything you need to know. Uh, but if, if sometimes people aren't radio friendly, maybe you don't know a lot about electronics. If you feel you're in over your head, when you're dealing with the company that makes the equipment, it's a lot easier to call them up and say, hey, I'm really new at this. I need some help and I know they'll help you. I've, I've talked to the people only a couple times, but I can tell you already that they're the kind of company that you want to do business with. So if you can and you can afford it, I would definitely buy direct from the Decoder Alert company themselves. So if you're interested, give the folks over to Decoder Alert a call or go to their website. The links, links will be probably in the comments. We'll probably have a live link on the video. I want to thank Jason Quam and the folks over at over at uh, the Decoder Alert System for, for helping us out and giving us all the good information about their company to review and try out. Uh, they're a great rig. If you buy them, I think you'll be satisfied. I'm Scott. Once again, thank you for coming to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. If you like what you've seen, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And we'll be back again with some more reviews. Thanks a lot.